Breaking news at 11 from the South Bay. Police use a pit maneuver to stop a stolen pickup, but that didn't work and he kept going. CBS 2's Lori Perez is live in Rolling Hills Estates to show us how that chase finally ended. Yeah, this was quite a scene. Right away, I want to show you just a mess of shattered glass and car parts in the middle of the intersection here at Hawthorne and Palos Verdes Drive North. This is right where the pursuit ended at 930 after what was a wild and dangerous ride. Sky 2 was tracking it all. It started just after 830 in Huntington Park. That's when police first tried to pull this guy over on a stolen truck call. He did not stop the Ford F-150. He was blowing through stoplights at times going upwards of 70 miles an hour on side street. He then led police over to Redondo Beach. That's where, at one point, police pit maneuvered him in a parking lot. He stopped. They stopped. Officers jumped out, and it looked like it was over, but they had not boxed him in, and so the suspect took that opportunity to take off again, much again to everyone's surprise. From there, it was into Rolling Hills Estates, where he rear-ended a car at a stoplight. He hit them pretty hard, spinning them around. Thankfully, we do not believe anyone in that car was hurt. And seconds later, police did another pit maneuver, blocking the truck in. Finally, Sky 2 was overhead as a team of officers surrounded the truck, they smashed his windows and they dragged him out of that truck and onto the road where they took him into custody. It was the end of an intense hour, a very dangerous situation. Again, thankfully, it does not appear anyone was hurt. They got this cleaned up uh, very quickly here at this intersection and the roads are back open. But again, there is that big mess. Every time the cars go by, we do hear them crunching over the mess of uh, shattered glass and car parts. We are live in Rolling Hills Estates tonight. I'm Lori Perez, CBS 2 News. Lori, thank you. Developing news in Huntington Beach. A terrifying crash ended with two people trapped in an overturned car with live wires on top. Yeah, let's go to CBS 2's Jeff Nguyen. He's live near the scene on Edward Street and Warner Avenue. Good evening, Jeff. Chris and Sarah, right now crews are working to restore electricity here after a violent crash. It sent one car into those power poles right there and then Looking over here, you can see tire marks leading this way because a second car slammed into that apartment, which is now red tagged. And I heard a big crash, and I looked over here and saw all the lights, all the electrical stuff was sparking. Barbara Anderson was walking her two dogs in Huntington Beach when she witnessed a violent crash that created this massive debris field in which one car flipped and landed on some power lines. The impact sent a second vehicle right at her. I see the car coming at me and I moved to the right and that car went right between my dog and myself. That SUV ended up punching a hole right through this wall. 87-year-old Omar Espinosa says he was in his living room around 5.30 tonight. Suddenly there was a very loud noise. And, and shake. The crash caused a power outage in the area, and three people were taken to a trauma center after firefighters pulled them from the wrecks. Barbara Anderson says she had just said a prayer right before the collision. It's a miracle. It really is. For now, Mr. Espinosa, who lives here, will be staying with family. In the meantime, police tell us that the cause of this crash is under investigation. Live in Huntington Beach, Jeff Nguyen. CBS 2 News. All right, Jeff, thank you. Now a tragic crash near Cal State Northridge. Two people were killed after their kid car went out of control and hit another car. CBS 2's Christy Fajardo, she's live at the crash site in Northridge. Good evening, Christy. Yeah, good evening, Chris. Police spent several hours here at the scene looking over evidence and also taking measurements, and they believe speed was a factor. And take a look, the skid marks here, right over there, hint at the speed that was involved. It was the last thing police could do for the victim, shield his body from view. Late this afternoon, the LAPD says he was in the passenger seat of this kit car when it crossed into the oncoming lane and collided with this sedan. The driver, who was next to him, was also killed. Uh, he was flying, he was going really fast. Uh, then all of a sudden I heard him lost control and he spun. And uh, you can hear him racing his engine, trying to correct himself. The impact left the cars so mangled, survivors had to be cut out. Police say four people were in this sedan, including one person believed to be just 15. 
All were taken to the hospital in critical condition. That is definitely his car. Johnny Lay came to the corner of Parthenia and Encino looking for his friend. He says when they didn't show up for dinner, he got worried and found his friend's cell phone still pinging from what's left of his car. His location's on. On so, his cell phone. On his cell phone. He left for the hospital, but for the two people in the other wreckage, there will be no reunion. Police say the two that were killed appeared to be in their 50s and 60s. Police also tell us the car they were in was built to resemble an antique and didn't have all the modern day safety features. Live in Northridge, Christy Fajardo, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Christy. Hazmat and health officials were on the scene of a sewage leak near a carnival tonight. This happened near Garfield and Garvey Avenues in Monterey Park around 5. Sky 2 was above the scene earlier. The rides at Lunar New Year Carnival happening nearby had to be shut down because of this. We still don't know exactly what caused the sewage leak. All right, here we go. A live look now at Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta as we count down to Super Bowl 53. The Rams will arrive in town tomorrow. And a lot more people coming behind them in about eight days. Today, the players practiced in Thousand Oaks. Their last one of the season at their team facility at Cal Lutheran. The Rams will look to compete, uh, complete an incredible turnaround with a Super Bowl championship. That's right, and it all started the day they hired Sean McVay. CBS News' Kevin Cuenca is here with more, and he's so young. Yeah, he's young, he's energetic, and he still commands the respect of oh, these yeah. older players in the locker room. It's really special what Sean McVay has done. Just two years ago, the Rams made Sean McVay the youngest head coach in NFL history. Now he'll look to become the youngest ever to win the Super Bowl. Having just turned 33, McVeigh is actually younger than offensive lineman Andrew Whitworth and John Sullivan. But the players have no problem buying into McVeigh because of how he approached the locker room from day one. It wasn't like, oh man, this is my team. I'm gonna come in here. You ain't doing my way. It was more about how can we, what can we do as a team together, coaching coaches and players, to change this thing around and win games. And I think uh, with that approach, you know, it kind of resonated with all the men in here. Like, okay. This guy isn't about, you know, micromanaging. He's about winning games and what can we do to, to, to get that done. When he got here, um, it was all about buying into to what he was talking about, buying into uh, character and buying into um, just the we, my, we not me mentality and, you know, embodying that. And ever since we've done that and this team has, you know, kind of carried that on our shoulders, we, we've been winning. While the players had to believe in McVay, he clearly believes in them, too. We'll get his thoughts a little later in sports. Chris and Sarah, it's been really crazy to see not only him command and have success, but he's done it by being a very likable guy. He's one of the nicest coaches you'll meet. He's awesome. That is so cool. Yep. Great to see. Thank you so much, Kevin. All right, so speaking of Rams fans, they're getting ready to send off their team in style tomorrow. CBS 2's Greg Mills is at the training facility in Thousand Oaks with details on how you can catch your favorite players before they head to Atlanta for the big game. Los Angeles Rams spend more time here in Thousand Oaks than they do in Los Angeles. We've run into uh, some of the parents of the Rams players. Some of their kids go to the schools in the area. It's pretty obvious the people here are proud of their team. So it makes it feel like this is kind of the Conejo Valley um, team. It's exciting. Businesses here cater to the Rams, literally in the case of Urbane Cafe. This week I've actually uh, delivered to them three times already. Big orders too for some big guys like a hundred sandwiches each time. You can't see the Rams here, but you can certainly see them tomorrow morning in Los Angeles. The team's buses will stop at their new stadium en route to LAX from 10 a.m. until noon. Coach and the players are all going to address the crowd. The Rams send off is free to fans, but you have to register for tickets at the Rams website, therams.com slash sendoff, and show ticket confirmation when you get to the Rams new stadium. Here's where you park, the corner of Pinque and Prairie in Inglewood. And gates open at 9 a.m. In Thousand Oaks, Greg Mills, CBS 2 News. Pretty cool. Leading up to the Super Bowl, Jim Hill, Pat Harvey, Jeff Michael, and Suzanne Marquez will be live from Atlanta all week for you. Our coverage starts tomorrow night with Jim Hill. And if you didn't know, don't forget CBS. CBS 2 is your home for the Rams in Super Bowl 53. The Rams and Patriots will face off on Sunday, February 3rd. And the only place you can watch the game is right here on CBS 2. Remembering the owner of an iconic L.A. restaurant, coming up the life and legacy of the beloved owner of Cantor's Deli. Find out the one celebrity he always looked forward to serving. Plus, the dangerous road rage incident. It's all caught on camera. 
And a sweet settlement in a lawsuit against some popular candy makers. We'll tell you why. And here's a live look with our LAX camera. Last weekend of January, temperatures above average, but I'll tell you about a rain chance coming up. Here's a sweepstakes that sports fans will love. You could win a trip to Super Bowl 53 in Atlanta, courtesy of the Los Angeles Rams. Donate $100 to the United Way of Greater Los Angeles, and you could be on your way. Price includes two Super Bowl tickets, travel to and from Atlanta on a Rams charter, hotel, and an autographed Jared Goff jersey. Go to unitedwayla.org forward slash Super Bowl for official rules. No contribution necessary to enter. Must be 21 or older and a California resident.